my, what a big bulbous knob you have. <laughs> What's up, y'all? We are gonna get started with the Titan Rekey. And we have a knob and a double cylinder deadbolt. We have keys for these, but we're gonna kind of pretend like we also don't have keys because of how they are built. Uh, Titan it was kind of made, I wanna say between like the 80s and 90s era. And that is where they had started having this bigger head. You can distinguish the Titan. They're, they're pretty much the same as Quickset, except for one key difference is their six pin. And all I said at the very whole beginning of this, we're gonna be dealing with five pin locks. This was a step out for Quickset to come out with this six pin, but it's not the same as regular six pin locks. But most of the time it's gonna say Titan right there on the latch. They're always a bigger, like a, a beefier. Once we take it off the door, it's super heavy, uh, pretty well built. They did last a long time, but there was one little flaw with them and the fact that they are six pin instead of five pin and in the fact that you do have to pick the knob. If you don't have a key, this was our introduction to having to, to pick a lock to get it apart because there's no way to pop the cylinder out without a key or picking it. So let's get started rekeying this and we're gonna talk about the difference in six pin quick set and regular six pin regular locks. Let's go ahead and talk about the difference in a regular six pin cylinder and lock and quick sets. First off, Standard six pin locks, everything except for quick set tighten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Basically, it's a five pin key, and boom, they made it longer. And then you have your six pin at the end as usual. But quick set didn't do that. Titan did not do that. What they decided to do is if we take that's a plug, if we take a blank and we take one of these Titan keys, what they did is you can see it right there. When you shoulder stop a key, when you're putting it in a key machine and making it, basically you, you have a guide and you stop both shoulders right there and then you cut the key out. So here, what they did is you got one, two, three, four, five, six, but with a regular quick set key, right? If you shoulder, just put it behind so you can see, shoulder stop both of them right there, right? the five pin in this is the same as that what they did was they squeezed in this in the very front and in fact they squeezed it in and when you're cutting them uh, it, it specifically says on the 1200 card it specifically says are you using the 1011 the 1011 blade is narrower the problem with this is when you're cutting these on a code machine it calls for a fatter blade but if you use the fatter blade there it'll actually cut into the shoulder, which you don't want. That's really, really bad. And as a result, we ended up with this vertical cut, which is a very exaggerated example. So on almost all locks, so this is one way you can for sure tell, besides the number six, if you look at a regular quick set keys, five, six, I mean six pins, but again, it's squeezed up in the front. And if the cut is past two, if we go over to this Titan, for instance, if you look, if you glance at this key and don't look at the head, one, two, three, four, five, that's because this is a one cut. So that's kind of a, like a little trick to get past that if you're worried about having to cut this vertical cut because you do have to have a cutting machine or you have to file it, you have to have a cutting machine with a 90 degree wheel, which we do happen to have that for this and GM. But the deeper the cut, the more of a chance the wheel, even with the narrow wheel, will cut the shoulder off. And it shoulder is pretty critical on this. While I'm talking about the shoulder, that is another way that you can tell that this might be a six pin lock is if you look at the bottom shoulder on a quick set, and the top shoulder, they are directly in line with each other. But if you look at one on a Titan without looking at the head, you can see the bottom shoulders offset. That is how it's designed to work as far as, and, and also let me point this out because that is also very important. See the head of the key right there? It's actually set back, right? A little bit further because it goes in deeper and these would not go in deeper. So if you glance at a key and it looks like five pin, it still may be, this may be a one cut, which is practically a no cut. 
anyway and you can get away with just not cutting it and but putting a one pin in there but as we see with this five pin plug your six pin will work and that's also one of these things with these painted keys that there's hundreds of them out there they're always going to be offset shoulder or a kw11 head this head is the pretty much the copy you know it's not quite as big when we sold when these were being sold heavier we actually sold the original titan keys because they're nickel silver but these are the pretty much the titan style keys still a little bit smaller than original that is the kw10 head and uh as well as like do not duplicate keys almost all of them since this key since their shoulder stopped and when you cut this on a machine it's going to copy the five cuts no problem but in case somebody pops in with one of these it'll work the same way kind of how they have gm keys at these big box stores now old six cut gms actually are designed that way too so what's going on is the inside of this now before i get started on that i will say there are some uh there is a kw5 which is a true six pin and you can see that the shoulders are equal and it would have true six pins in other words the first cut would be the first cut right boom and you see how it's actually longer that's the normal six pin style but these are super rare pretty much the only way you'll find these is in like they come with padlocks because padlocks would use a six pin key or there's an older gate lock that this was very very common on one of those weirdo gate locks that had the cylinder in it it actually was one of the most popular ones in the u.s that used this kw5 other than that there is very very rare using reason to even have these keys I, we don't even really we've got like a few of those left and then i've been saving these from random uh quick set style locks that we sell either avis or lsda and just selling them when we see them but we very very rarely see them but that's how you tell the difference true six pin fake six pin and uh five pin and again all of these are going to be offset shoulder just in case one brings in so let's go ahead and take them off the door wait a minute we're going to demonstrate this real quick i've already got one cut out here i will say that's what this little rekin notch in this key is for at the bottom and you can actually see right here between two and three rekin notch these were the actual keys that were sold we used to stock these by the 50 count as well that way you didn't have to uh you could just copy the key onto one of these and you didn't have to do what we're going to do we're going to do a cheat uh so again you have the keys that actually up oh, no this is not the keys here's the cheat so key that operates it right left right it's fine and then one with a notch cut in the bottom return it and look at that it it slips right out but the point of me showing you this right now is i'm going to have this out when we get the other one out and we're going to see kind of the problem with old 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 titan where they've been real heavily used this bottom part right here is uh, very important as a stop and what happens is from people slamming the key in over years and years that bottom stop gets worn out and if you're trying to use if you ended up having to key one of these to it it's going to throw off the key the size of the knob doesn't really matter because quickset premier and even wiser have those bigger bulbous knobs and even nowadays the smart key of course smart key was not even a thought back when titan was around but just showing off that you can't really tell just by the size of the knob it could be anything else it's not that great of a deal for a double cylinder because as you see when we take it off we still actually have to just unscrew the inner cylinder but assuming everything works okay and you have a rekeying tool here you're gonna put it in and we're gonna turn it to the nine o'clock position to the left and then just kind of wiggle 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 and it will come out for you all right so that's what's going on when you turn the key it's dropping down in the slot and letting it pull out of there this is the most important part of these locks if the spring comes out and yes it will come out if you yank that that'll go flying out or if you drop the plug it will actually if you pull a plug follower out 
it'll actually shoot down. Now it stays in the plug because this is being held in, but if something happens to this wire, it, it's got to go back, otherwise your whole lock is shot. There's no other way to hold this guy in there. So be very, very cautious when you're doing that. All, at some point in time, we all have to deal with getting this guy back in, so you don't want to lose that, period. We can do one of two things with the knob. We can take one of the keys, because we're rekeying it anyway. We can take one of the keys, and this is one main reason why I recommend having a flipper here. Remember on the card it tells us to go between two and three. So that would be kind of in this range and you want to cut right to the bottom, to the bottom of that whatever groove right there. So two and three, we're going to move this over just a little bit and snip and snip. Remember if it's, if it's too wide, that's okay. We're not, this is going to be a disposable key. We're not going to be using this after this, so you can absolutely charge for it. And use that key to put in, turn, and pull it out, and then re-key it. Or, if you don't have a key at all, A, you can just unscrew the dead bolt, because even though you can pull out the outside cylinder, you can't pull out the inside cylinder if it's a uh, double here, so you still have to do this part. Typically, I never pull the core, even if I have a key. Typically, what I'll do is I'll just unscrew the deadbolt. And see, it, it was, he made these super, super heavy. That's a good old block of steel right there. Or pot metal, I guess you could call it. Uh, and, and these screws actually screw into a hollow screw that also introduced us in the Quickset world to having to need a bigger flathead. So I repeatedly have mentioned that it's good to have a, what, 3 16 or 5 30 second flathead that will accomplish most locksmith tasks. Quick set screws and old Corbin Russell use these same things, old Corbin Russell dead bolts, and even new ones. Nowadays, you'll run across even uh, some of, here's, here's an example right here. We're still seeing those on all heavier duty quick set titan whatever dead bolts they still use this same system so what we're gonna do something's pretty tight isn't it jason you got carried away with that one all right we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this but it's just as easy to do the dead bolt just like another quick set dead bolt same theory you can easily rekey it just by taking it off and doing what we're doing now a lot of heavy duty metal involved making these guys but they have this ring which was uh a convertible i really like this design i wish they would still do that but oh, look at that converts it to use in a small hole like we have or a two and an eighth inch hole so very very sweet design even for way back then they knew what was up because back then it was far more common to have small holes or you can pick the door lock we're going back to not having a key so now we were we're introduced we're having to freaking pick a quick set to get it apart now i will mention it's a good idea to lubricate the inside of this guy anyway so if you just want to unscrew it and take it to your truck to pick it that's fine you can do it at the door it really depends on whether it's like today and it's in the sun if it was in the sun on the 150 degree day like we're having it's definitely getting unscrewed from the door and going with me to the truck to get work done You want to give it a little boop of squirt first. A little squirty, squirty boop. Okay, so we got it. We got it the wrong way. It's got to go. It's got to go the. I go my. Okay, we've got to go the other way. And remember, we, we are getting pressed in on by that little doodad on the inside. So spinning this guy is a little bit touchy, but we, that's the only way to do it. Yeah, let's go two full boops. Ah, two full boops worked, y'all. 
and we're gonna grab that diamond diamonds actually make for good tug of war who tug of war things there so that's how you do that we are at the point of just a standard rekey now outside cylinder we're gonna pop off they have this little rubber booty over them that i don't know what that's for uh, and then we have that so we're gonna grab our pickle fork remember our plug's still turned we want to try to leave it turned but we don't want to leave it turned all the way because what this bar is dropping into is a slot in the plug and we wouldn't we you can't get it out see anyway so you do have to turn it boom at a, to about a, like 11 o'clock position 11 o'clock 12 o'clock uh, and make sure that's sticking out and then yes you can push the plug out so pickle fork basically basically the interior cylinders are the same or the uh, deadbolt cylinders are exactly the same except for that little thing that's in the way and it really only affects you when you're checking top pin so we're going to take this particular key and change it to a different particular key we'll save that guy till the last all right now remember you have uh you could have it like this or we could actually already have it out of the core we'll just take it out of the core and we want to use the regular key or you you can you can use this key to rekey it that's fine it is the rekeying tool so you can use that one big thing here two things if you know there's no master pins use a solid follower solid on the end boop to get that out if you have to check for master pins use the mortise inside of a hollow follower this side of it because or even like a quick set maybe has one of those yep 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 that one's super deep i'm not really thrilled with that let's try yeah there we go we'll just use this guy when you're following it out you want to make sure that this open side is not right in line with your top pins and is not in line with that guy so you do have to position this very carefully again if you're not checking for top pins just do this but here we want to have this opening and i want to show you why so what we're going to do is we're going to align this so that when it follows through it'll cover both the area where this is trying to drop down and the top pins and that's at about 11 about 10:45, 11 o'clock position and here we're going to angle that right about right about there and then shoot it through as quick as possible no harm no foul so let's set this aside i'm going to cut on this light and we are going to look to see why i did this all right so normally what you're going to do is when you're checking you're just going to follow it out but you need to make sure that this all right okay we want that on that side and this open side up and the reason is is that lets you check the top pins without fear of that jumping down once we get to about the three position right it's going to be in the way so we're just going to remove these guys we're going to go back to two okay we're good there and remember at this point we are about to where this drops down and this is why it's important to be very careful boom all right so now oh no what in the heck do we do now uh it does stay by itself i imagine if you like screwed around with it and let that drop out and it may but normally what you can do is just push this back down don't damage your springs jason that spring is really stiff okay now we have the problem with me just smooshing the spring we're going to turn that a little bit we're going to back it almost all the way right till we start seeing that guy right there and there's usually just enough room depending on how deep that is to be able to get a new pin in there now i don't know if we crushed that spring or not i don't think we did i think we came really close so again, this is all really dependent on how deep your little feet are. And I can't see it through the camera, so I'm gonna have to look over. At some point, should be able to 
get it down in there. Okay. Well, we have we have a dual problem now. We got to get that pen because this particular one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that pen in there and then I'm going to turn it. Okay, number three pin, get in there. I can't see, that's the whole problem here, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it. So now I've got it captured right there, all right? I'm gonna go ahead, turn it, push it down, turn it, turn it, turn it, and then push that guy down and then turn it back. And if you do it carefully enough, you'll be all right. And of course, after you do this, you have to check the other top pins for uh, master wafers or if there's a spring issue or something that part's not bad because you can just do the last three and i know there's none in here so that is how you deal with that guy other than that is just a simple rekey now remember me mentioning the bottom shoulder part of all this look at that uh look at that bottom shoulder okay i'm gonna go ahead and take this guy off to show you the difference between a practically unused which is very rare to see nowadays and a heavily used which is what we have there so we are going to use a we're not checking for no can't use that one we need a hollow one to go over that end you could shim it as well all right look at the difference in the two of these plugs aside from the obvious wear See, uh, see the bottom part right there? All right, so if we needed to rekey this to a five pin key, that bottom is gonna stop and there will be just the true five pins. But what happens with these guys that are worn out is normally it stops right there, but it's allowed to go even further. So you totally, totally bypass that what used to be a block. If it stopped right there, it would be fine. But if you're using a five pin key and you're dropping out this wafer, it actually is allowed to push in further, which pushes up that last and throws the spacing all out of whack. So you really have to, especially on worn ones like this, you really need to be using a, uh, not that. <laughs> you need to be using a KW11, any of them with the bottom shoulder cut back. So it's good to have D&D &D keys because you can always use those. Anyway, so of course, if we were doing something silly and keying these up to a five pin key, then we'd have to drop that last pin and you have one through five right there. So it's it's not a, and then when you get into master key and I've got one customer that has a five pin or a six pin KW10 master and then once all of them key to the five pin keys, it's horrible. Get, you can get really confused with that whole process. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna rekey this from that to, let's go with these guys since I've already got one. And it's got a super deep cut with that vertical front to it. Okay. Okay, remember we had this guy picked. So we are once again, I'm gonna go, no, we're gonna use this guy because I'm just better at it. Where'd it go? Okay, just like with any quick set, we're gonna re-clip this guy. Yep. This was the interior, so we want this on here. And exterior. Now, because of this, we are gonna have to use this retain, retaining ring, or this uh, rekeying tool to get it back in its housing there. Uh, yeah, and that's one little thing, is sometimes that little clip causes problems. Didn't that time, but sometimes it does. Don't forget your rubber booty. Boop. Thank you.
boop, boop, and of course, lubricant. And lubricant on the backs. Once again, the knob is super easy, but I do highly recommend you A, check to make sure the knob screws are tight. Since you don't have to unscrew it and screw it back on, it, these get loose. So you want to tighten them down. B, uh, go ahead and unscrew it anyway and spray the inside with lubricant because it probably needs it. All right, again, the same way with the other quick set. We're going to take that. We're going to take our bolt holes we're going to stick it through actually it's sticking out right now so it goes it goes down if you look if you look right there see it's down so we'll come in here face it down just like that yep and we are going to tighten these guys down I would recommend you go ahead and check it while it's at this point. Better only have to unscrew one before having to unscrew everything. All right, and uh, again, now it's facing this way. If we throw that bolt back out, it'll be facing down. I always do it the same way so you don't confuse yourself. And we need the interior housing as well, so let's poop that on there. And facing down right in the hole boom just like that everything's really long on these because they are super thick on the doors they are hefty hefty guys all right all i can reach here is my cobalt number one phillips but that's okay it'll work best to switch to two though And check the key, outside, inside. I check them two or three times, just like this. Whenever I put a lock back on the door, that's like two to four times for each hole. Aside from how worn out it is, it works good. Oh, old floopy hole there on the key keyholes. Oldie but a goodie. So anyway, that is it on Titan. Probably not. I'm sure I forgot something. But at the end of the day, I had to refilm all this because I didn't like the beginning of it. But in case you were curious about Titan, Titan and six pin, and what the heck's going on with it, blah blah blah. Just watch that video that I just did because you, you probably just skipped to the end. Anyway, we'll catch you next video. Uh, either going to be smart key or uh, handles. I think Maybe lever handles. Maybe the, that screw thing. I think we need to do a video on that. Until then, though.